with Michelle Tuckner. The Broncos were back to work today to get ready for the Bengals on Monday night football. Peyton Manning left practice early today to get treatment for his thigh injury. It's the first time this season Manning has had to take some time off for an injury. Manning was out there for the Broncos walkthrough and the stretching part of practice. Then he went into the locker room for treatment. Manning suffered the thigh injury against the Chargers last Sunday. He also played while he was sick with the flu, but he says he's feeling better and that's behind him. Manning hopes the extra day to repair for the Bengals will help him recover. I think it's good for everybody uh, this time of year. Everybody. The Colorado State Rams are in Las Vegas getting ready for their bowl game against Utah on Saturday. And when they're not practicing, the Rams are also taking in some of the sights of Las Vegas. The players took a ride on the high roller last night. It's a giant Ferris wheel that goes up 550 feet above the Las Vegas Strip. The Rams enjoying the views, also taking a few pictures. And for some of the guys like Richard Higgins, this is their first time experiencing Las Vegas. It, it's a great feeling down here. Um, to the IC Avs rookie goalie Calvin Pickard continues his outstanding play while Semyon Varlamov is injured. Tonight, Pickard and the Avs facing one of the top scoring teams, the Penguins, on the road tonight at Pittsburgh. And the Penguins were one of five NHL teams that's been affected by the mumps. Captain Sidney Crosby missed the last three games with the virus, but he was back tonight. And in the third period, Crosby on the breakaway and Calvin Pickard with the great glove save that keeps the game scoreless. And they would go into overtime time but in OT Blake Homo with the rebound goal scores his 11th goal of the season Pickard though fantastic again made 47 saves Penguins win one nothing in overtime the Nuggets were hosting the Rockets and Dwight Howard also having some fun with Rocky during the game the two striking some karate kid poses then oh. ouch <laughs> ouch or actually delivered the pose and Rocky, oh, Rocky. Uh, doing his uh, best flop and maybe a, a little acting there but uh, <laughs> hyping it up for the crowd always fun when you see the players kind of Engaging with the mascot. With the rock. Oh, does he feel bad? Does yeah, he come comes over? over, helps him up. Oh, they're they're nice. all friends. Uh, Go back to Houston. He gave him a hand. Right. Yeah. I do love the sweater he's wearing. Though. The ugly, the <laughs> ugly, ugly Christmas <laughs> yeah. nugget style. And actually, our sports team, we have the Broncos version yes. of that sweater. Yeah. Maybe wow. uh, coming to a Christmas uh, holiday greeting card near you Ooh, soon. Yeah. The Pro Bowl selections announced tonight, and the Broncos have nine players named to the Pro Bowl. That's the most in the league. Of course, the Broncos would much rather be playing in the Super Bowl in Arizona. Instead, that's the week after the Pro Bowl. Peyton Manning leading the way for the Broncos with his four. 14th career selection and joining him on offense it's Demarius Thomas selected for the third straight year and Julius Thomas also going for the second time along with tackle Ryan Clady and here is the full list on defense five Broncos as well the pass rushers Demarcus Ware and Von Miller quarterback Chris Harris earning his first selection and also in the secondary Akeem Tlaib and safety TJ Ward the Rams introducing their new head football coach Mike Bobo today he comes to Fort Collins from the University of Georgia Georgia, where he was their offensive coordinator. Today, he called the opportunity his dream job. Bobo taking over for Jim McElwain, and he interviewed with the Rams when they were in Las Vegas over the weekend for their bowl game. His contract is for five years. It will average one and a half million a year. His buyout clause, though, less than McElwain's at five million. Bobo is looking to continue the success that McElwain started. The commitment's there. I believe this place can be a championship program. And to the ice, the Avs looking to win their third game in a row tonight. Semyon Varlamov is back between the pipes. He missed the last six games. The Avs hosting the Blues tonight. And Varlamov played well in his first game back. They got off to a great start, scored three goals in the first period and more in the second. On the power play, Ryan O'Reilly goes top shelf. Makes it 4 0 Avs. Then just 40 seconds later, Jerome McGinley with his eighth of the season, and the Avs win three in a row. The final 5 0. Verlamov made 26 saves in his second shutout of the season. The Nuggets in Brooklyn tonight playing back to back games. Fourth quarter, Kenneth Fareed with the rebound. He takes it all the way up the court for the lay in. Nuggets up by five. Fareed with a double double, 20 points, 14 rebounds. But the Nets then go on a 13 7 run to end the game. Joe Johnson hits the three. He he had 24 points, and the Nets go on to win 102 to 96. And the Buffs in Hawaii playing in the semifinals of the Diamond Head Classic, taking on George Washington. Final seconds, the Buffs down three, needing a three for overtime. And Eskia Booker with a last chance, but his shot is blocked. Booker withheld to just 
eight points and George Washington wins 53 to 50. But you know what? The Buffs are in Hawaii. A nice yeah, trip yeah. out there for Christmas. So, you know, not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It could be worse. For and sure. We're going to write in Emmanuel Sanders on that. Yes, yeah, a little bit of a snub for Emmanuel. A little surprising, but... Yeah. Nine guys, though, for the That's Broncos, good. That's most good. in the league. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Well, March Madness is already here. Wyoming needed to win the Mountain West Championship game to get into the NCAA tournament, and it's been a long wait. And now the Cowboys are going dancing for the first time in 13 years. Wyoming made it to the title game, beating top seed Boise State in overtime last night in Las Vegas. Picked this up in the first half. Josh Adams to Larry Nance Jr. for the layup. He had 14 points, and the Cowboys were up 28 to 20 at halftime. Second half, Wyoming went eight minutes without a field goal, but this one was huge. Over a minute left, Josh Adams hits the three, and Wyoming takes the lead up 43 to 41. Now, 14 seconds left, Aztecs down two. Akil Quinn misses a three pointer. Wyoming wins 45 to 43. They celebrate at center court, and the Cowboys are going to the NCAA tournament. Well, the Rams head coach Larry Eustace says that they are not on the bubble. The Rams are in the big dance. They'll have a watch party tomorrow in Fort Collins on Selection Sunday and find out who and where they'll be playing in the NCAA tournament. The Rams lost in the semifinals last night to San Diego State, but they didn't have their star player, J.J. Avila. Eustace held him out with a sprained ankle because he wants him to be ready for the NCAA tournament. Eustace is confident that the Rams will get one of the 36 at-large bids to the big dance tomorrow. I have no doubt that we're... The Avs finish up their homestand tonight, hosting the Flames, a big game for both teams as they're fighting to make the playoffs. The Avs started the night seven points behind the Jets for the final wild card spot. This game was scoreless until the second period. On the power play, Alex Tangay scores against his former team. His 19th goal of the season gives the Avs the lead one to nothing. Then just a few minutes later, it's the factor. Ryan O'Reilly goes top shelf, puts the Avs up two to nothing. And last check, that's the score heading in to the third period. And congrats to the CU ski team, the Buffs winning the national championship. It's Colorado's 20th national championship in skiing and their third title in the last five years. The Buffs have two national championships this year in skiing and in men's cross country. Well, you already know about new Broncos tight end Owen Daniels talents on the football field, but he is also keeping an eye on the skies. His nickname is the weatherman. Daniels has a background in meteorology while he was in school at Wisconsin. He says he was a weather nerd as a child growing up in Illinois, even remembered watching the Weather Channel as a little kid. Here's a look at some of his skills as a meteorologist. I'm such a good predictor of the weather that <laughs> Greg he's coming for your job. He is 